Hey guys, my name is David and I'm here to help you with the ACT English section. And I'm going to lead you through some general strategies. This is the grammar section, this is the um, sort of generally understanding uh, reading mechanics. Uh, if you're looking for how to sort of do the reading comprehension section, you're going to want to go over to the video for the reading section. Alright, so I'm going to take you guys to an example problem from a practice ACT from, I believe, 2014-2015. Uh, and it's talking about, this is from a passage talking about some sort of engineering project. Just a, just a little pro tip, the, these reading sections have a lot of sort of weird, different things they talk about. Don't try to follow the passage, uh, it's story, you're just there to focus on the grammar and the mechanics. So, we're talking about this engineer, William Barclay Parsons, and it's talking about a project that he was working on. So this is a problem uh, here that's a fantastic example of the ACT sort of testing you on how to beat your incorrect instincts on grammar. So it's talk so we have the engineer, William Barclay Parsons. Now immediately, this looks like this is going to be some sort of interjection. So we're thinking the engineer, William Barclay Parsons, and I forgot a comma. There's a comma here, the engineer, comma, William Barclay Parsons. Immediately, it looks like an interjection, so we're thinking we're going to need another comma right here. So immediately, so the instinct is to go down, look at the options, and look for that. There is no such option. There's only no change, a co the dash here instead of a comma, a uh, comma at the end, and nothing. Now, the nothing immediately looks bad, so that's sort of one you think to shy away from. But then you read the rest of the sentence. The engineer, comma, William Barclay Parsons, accepted responsibility for the project. Now, our job is to figure out what mechanic works best here. So immediately, no change doesn't look that good because if you're if you're going to have a comma here and it's going to talk it's going to go into a person's name that is an interjection and you're going to need something to match on the other side so you're going to need a comma here there's no such option so immediately no change as much as the ACT likes to put it in often is not the case and it's not the case here next we have a dash now a dash sort of works in a similar way to the comma it sort of the, fills the same sort of interjection role but again there's nothing to match on the other side and it only leads up to here and there's no dash in the question. So we can rule that one out as well because that is also not a properly functioning interjection. Next we have a comma at the end. Now that looks like it could be okay, you know, we get rid of this comma that sort of destroys the whole need for an interjection. However, if we sort of read this through, the engineer William Barclay Parsons having a comma there requires a pause in the sentence and that doesn't exactly fit. So, despite our instincts, the one with absolutely no punctuation is the one that's, that fits by process of elimination. The engineer, William Barclay Parsons, has had the responsibility for the project. Just all the way through, boom, we're done, we're finished. Now, it's weird because our instincts tell us with a sentence this long and with so many sort of components, it feels like we need some sort of punctuation in there to make it flow properly. However, it just doesn't work like that. And so process of elimination leads you to beat that instinct, and that's what ACT is testing you for on a question like this. All right, so example number two. Now, this is sort of where we're going to go into a bit of a special twist in the question, M. Night Shyamalan, when he makes good movies, sort of, sort of question. All right, so we have this long, big passage, and I'm just going to wait here a second while you pause to read it, if you so choose. You good? This first sentence isn't really important. Um, I just sort of included it for context to the question. Uh, this is the sentence we're really worried about. First, workers use picks and shovels to remove roads and dig a deep trench. So, again, it's asking us if this is a structurally sound sentence. So, you know, our instinct first is no change. That never looks good. That is a frowny face. That never looks good. But, again, keep in mind. All right. So the next one is this really long sentence, and actually the one after that is this really long sentence. And the third, or the third option, you know, not including no change, is just delete this, delete this little underlined first. So this first long, this first long passage, it's just talking about going to the ground, giving more details on what they're digging exactly. But we read, and it's kind of superfluous. We don't really need this information to make this a proper sentence. So, eh, it's useful information, but it's also superfluous. That's, that's out. This next one, you know, maybe, maybe this sentence will be useful. Trench for, trench far down below, since it, eh. And, the, um, 
it ends with mentioning the cut and cover, which was already mentioned here in the same context. So, this is a repetition of this, which probably means it's superfluous. This gets a frowny face for being repetitive. It's a no-go. Next, next is the option to delete the underlying portion. So we just have, first, workers use picks and shovels to remove roads and dig. Something about that seems off. What are we digging exactly? This is, uh, this is a... This is a passage all about sort of the information. You know, you don't have to, as I said earlier, you don't have to follow all of the sort of information and story of the passage, but it's useful to sort of realize generally what's going on and generally the voice used. And the voice in this passage is one that's informative, and it generally wants to give some, you know, some details about what's going on in this engineering project. This is the same passage from earlier. So, if we're just leaving it with first workers used picks and shovels to remove roads and dig, we don't know what they're digging. So, deleting this probably isn't the best idea either. So we look through and, you know, something's not right. We said no to all of these, but wait, but wait, where I'm not channeling this thing, what a twist! No change actually works the best here. You know, all the guides, and even I told you, you know, be wary of no change. They just sort of like to put it in to trick you, to sort of make you think, oh, everything's fine, there's a possibility that everything's fine, maybe it just is, that makes my life easy. And, you know, nine times out of ten is not the case, but here, it is. We want to keep this sentence exactly the way it is. It provides just enough detail, not too much answers. So no change answer is actually the best one here, despite everyone warning you to the contrary. It's the best answer. It's smiling. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching these, uh, these videos. I hope they helped. I hope they were informative for sort of teaching you how the English section works, how it, uh, how it sort of tends to like to trick you, how it tends to not trick you. Um, and I hope you can go over to our other videos and find some good preparation for the other parts of the ACT there.